Hello, welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Stephen Ryan and we post every week. So please subscribe and come along with us on our wonderful adventures. But where's Matthew? Matthew, are you around? <laughs> I am Mr. Ryan. I am going to come and join you on the other side of the lake. Yeah, well, just be careful. I can't see you walking over water. <laughs> oh, here I am, Mr. Ryan. Well, well, well. Welcome and, to my pond. And why are we, why shouldn't we be, in front of your pond? Well, in fact, we're here because of the very plant that you can see before us, which is commonly known as a giant marsh marigold. A giant marsh marigold? Yep. It's a obviously a bog plant. Yeah. It's called Kelpha, we think, palustris, possibly subspecies polypetala. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Let's dive in and have a closer look. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> This plant is botanically known as Keltha, which is an old name for a yellow flower that probably wasn't the same thing. It's palustris, which means of the swamps, which is a fairly obvious name. But this giant version has some uh, inconsistency in how it's known. So you might find it as polypetala, meaning lots of flowers. You might find it as subspecies palustris, a bit of tautology, or you might just find it as polypetala. So it has lots of different name changes. but. As a garden plant, what's good about it is that it will float out over the water. It was originally planted in the mud on the edge of the pond and all its roots are out there in the water. It has these huge water lily like leaves and these cheery bright yellow flowers most of the winter and spring. So it couldn't be better for a largish pond. It comes from northern parts of Europe and North America, even up into subarctic areas, so it will grow in the coldest of climates. It will also grow quite well in warmer climates as long as it's in a wet environment. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to set viable seed. It will need to be managed in a pond because it can cover quite a big area, but I don't think there's any likelihood of it becoming a major weedy species. You can see here that it has nodes and at each node it will start to send out roots. Those will go down into the water. So it sort of runs along like a strawberry uh, and the stems are very, very porous and they hold a lot of air and so that keeps it buoyant and sits it up on the top of the water. And of course the good thing about it is it's quite unusual to find aquatic plants that flower in winter. There's plenty of water lilies and other things that will do their thing through the summer. So this plant is particularly useful to make the edge of the pond look cheery and beautiful all winter long. Mr. Ryan, it is really beautiful. And now that you've mentioned it, I can see that habit of it sort of, of stretching out across it, the water surface. It can. So I have to control it periodically. Mm. I, about every two years I get in there and rip bits off it and, and, and control it. In your uh, waders? In my waders, yes. It makes fabulous fish habitat because the fish can go underneath it and hide. Yeah. They can yeah. lay their eggs in there. Ah. Um, it shades the water a little bit. It's a wonderful plant. And talking of shade, what kind of light does it require? A lot of water plants like full sun. It's the other thing, it doesn't need full sun. Ah. So it's actually under the canopy of a large willow tree. Yes. The willows, of course, bear during the winter months. Yep. But in the summer, this pond is actually fairly shady and the kelpha copes beautifully. There you go. Well, win, win, win. Exactly. Now, Stephen, do you not have several aquatic gardens in your garden, aquatic ponds? I do. I have three different ponds that perform three slightly different purposes. So, Well, viewers, if you're interested in learning a bit more, let us know because we might do a series of videos about each of your ponds and the different environments that you've created yeah. with them and the different purposes they serve. What a good idea. Won't that be interesting? Yeah, there's another storyline uh -huh. ahead of us. <laughs> well, until next week, thank you very much for watching. We do post every week, so do subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next week. We will not be beside the water, but where could we be? We could be in another part of my garden or somebody else's. You ah, just never know. We could, we could. But until then, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye all.